Okay, I said that some people are joining. So hello, uh, amazing people. Let's wait uh, a few seconds for for everyone to join. Good morning, okay. good evening, good afternoon. Good day, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, where are you, Chris? What time is it? Uh, right now I'm in Taiwan, in Taichung, actually, close to, mm -hmm. the, to the capital. Uh, so it's 6 p.m. for me right now. What about you, Kaylin? It's like, I don't know, 10 a.m. here in the beautiful country of Ireland, as, as some might say. Um, but yeah, no, definitely, definitely not Taiwan. But yeah, no, thanks for joining us, Chris. Thanks to everyone else for joining us, too. We've seen it have a, a good few participants. We're going to give it a few minutes to let everyone in. But um, in essence, today we're going to deep dive into advocacy very quickly. Um, It'll be kind of like a, a round trip tour of some of the the uh, the ideas and best practices that we've learned along the way, but also um, some chance some for you to our, reflect. Yep, our best, some of our best practices. Why do we think uh, advocacy is so important and so cool? Uh, how it can influence both you, your uh, local society, or maybe even the global society uh yeah so we're gonna i think we can start in a few seconds because like still some people are joining and in the meantime Caleb, i see that we have people from all over the world because we i see some Amazing. philippines some brazil more philippines uh, brazil Great what a beautiful Britain, country uh yeah austria and one more person india so yeah so definitely people from all around the world and all the time zone. so perfect amazing Amazing. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, I think we could head start. So to, I suppose to start off, we're going to look a bit at what is advocacy. So it's Maybe very first, nice Kailum, let's introduce ourselves because I don't think that everybody, everybody knows it. <laughs> That's very fair. That's very fair. So Chris, tell me who you are, what you do. Uh, so hi guys, I am Chris. I am from Poland. Uh, right now I'm in European region's external, external representatives team. Uh, besides that, I'm in Jamboree man management team for Jamboree 2027. And generally speaking, I do some advocacy, some uh, some promotions for scouting and NGOs. And I'm also closely related to business. What about you, Kalum? Yes, thank you very much, Chris. Sounds like an exciting uh, an exciting few hats you have there to wear. Um, yes, I'm Kalum. I'm from the beautiful country of Ireland. I'm um, 20 years of age and... I'm one of the external representatives alongside Chris as well within the European Scout region. And I'm also the International Commissioner of Scouting Ireland. Outside of scouting, I've, uh, I suppose, deep dived into the world of uh, policy, politics, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then I found myself involved on a, a local, national and, and international level. So I suppose this, this word of advocacy is, is a very, very umbrella term, which hopefully we're going to break down over the next, uh, the next bit. But um, it's cool that you kind of have a, a bit of an idea who you are. But let us know who you are in the chat while we're talking. So I see we've got Philippines and Brazil. We've got India. Brilliant. We've got Pakistan, Austria, Great Britain. Very nice. So, no, it's great to, great to have you all here today. And thanks for joining us. Um, we know it could be the morning, the evening or the afternoon. So it's great. But um, I suppose we can we can get started, Chris. So okay, so let's start yeah. on what actually advocacy is um, for us, but also for you. Actually, we would start with asking you what do you think advocacy is. Uh, so here we have. Uh, I'm gonna put a link in the chat so you can see it uh, for our Slido, and we would love to see. Uh, your answers. What do you think advocacy is? How do you understand it? Uh, maybe what's the common idea for you? So maybe you already know and we don't need to dive in so much for it. And maybe uh, we, we, we need to start from the scratch. Uh, we'll see soon. So please right now join the Slido uh, and let us know what you uh, understand as, as the advocacy. Also, if at any point you have questions don't hesitate to to write them down in the chat uh we will be more than glad to answer them either in, either in the meantime or later on uh at the end um so yeah so right now please 
put on your put in your answers what do you think is advocacy do we have any answers yet Caleb? not yes but i hope you can all see my screen um we have okay, someone's typing okay. so i guess yeah. they can see it good 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 you know you think after all this time on zoom that we'd finally have it mastered but i i still struggle there jumping between the two yeah <laughs> that's true still every meeting starts with uh saying hello can you hear me uh and everything like that yeah yeah it's like chris you're still on mute actually oopsie yeah and it happens every time believe me <laughs> okay so we've got two three people typing uh the others you can just you know simply throw some words in just like uh one word now another word there like you know ba the basic basic sentence basic ideas what is advocacy for you okay we have a first one Advocacy to me means being vocal about the things I care about uh, in my community. Yeah, mm -hmm, for sure. Uh, what's more, advocacy means to show the true picture of Scouting in a fun, creative way. Your thoughts towards something, influencing others to take decisions to improve our lives, take action in order to reach a social target. Okay, that sounds really sophisticated, I, I could say. <laughs> yeah they seem to know more than us actually <laughs> yeah like i'm not sure if there is you know a point of us making the the workshop but we'll yeah, see yeah, yeah. to represent and raise our society yeah definitely as well brilliant okay i see that last two people are writing down so let's oh okay so not our uh, last last message and maybe we can then move on uh so yeah, so for Jarvis, advocacy is something particularly an activity that aims to influence decisions within political, economic, and social institutions. Advocacy is really are connected with scouting since scouts, particularly the YAF, must take action in order for us to achieve our common goal, or I would even say goals, but uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. I, I see. I, it's really interesting seeing the, the common teams through that. It's about caring for community, about influencing others, about raising issues, reaching a social target. It's really cool. It's really, really cool. So thanks everyone for sharing. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. Uh, I, I am really, really glad actually to see uh, some of the answers, especially that I feel like most of people see advocacy as only, I don't know, speaking or uh, being a, maybe some politician or or some a reporter that says about this topic, you know, to, to just speak for someone like a spokesperson, maybe, while it is much, much more than that. Uh, but some of you already also uh, like scratch the topic a little bit because it is actually influencing. It is influencing on many level um, for some common goal, as you said, for some common idea uh, to be heard, to, to make a change and to reach this common goal that you said before. Right, Galen? Definitely, definitely. It's all about bringing people together. Great. So will we move on? Yes, let's move on to, to the next part, Amazing. I guess. So, Chris, take it away. Yeah, so guys, if now we have more or less the, the view on what advocacy is, then what do you think the advocacy is, like the people who advocate do? What are the actions that they need to take? Uh, what are the um maybe come on uh come on areas where they can uh, show themselves of what what is the action they need to take to to do the advocacy to reach this common goal and you know get this influence that they really need to let's see yeah i'm really interested to see the different topics that people work on what are the different things in the communities all over the world like we heard that we have people here from spreading from austria to brazil what is there any um is there any linking or any intersecting intersecting ideas it'd be really cool to see yes for sure but also please um, beside the area uh like beside the common goal like the climate change uh please also write down some actions like okay i would for example go to our mayor to talk about this topic and ask him to do some change or i would uh go to the media or something like this you know more actions that you as people <laughs> Uh, you, you as scouts or active citizens would do to create this change, to make this influence in your own societies, in your local communities. So how would you advocate? In what actions? Not only the areas, please, guys. 
you know, but climate, climate and gender equality. I love to see it. Yeah, definitely both really important topics. Becoming an activist and create. Yeah, definitely. I do awareness for he for she. Oh, that's a really nice program, actually. I've heard about this and I really like some, some program proposals from that. Spreading awareness, yeah, for sure. Uh, being young delegate for the MO. Yeah, definitely being an, a young delegate is great for both the uh, youth engagement, for showing off that you're a delegate and other people can do just the same, you know, by your uh, personal example to set off the example for others to show that it is possible or to simply spread the ideas uh, important for other youth delegates or other young people. Uh, I see, okay, writing uh, articles about equality, exactly. Uh, not only equality as the gender equality or the, maybe some other topics as well, like climate change, uh, maybe showing, giving some limelight on the on the places or areas that you know are some shady, are not perfect, and need some 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 actions to ta be taken off. Uh, like uh, like in your local communities, when you see that I don't know, like some kind of park or or school has something that's not working properly, and you would like to improve it, uh, you can also write articles about stuff like this to you know show it out to the people, either in your local news, in the national news. Or others i see we have some more non-gender toilets in the scouts sure that is also possible to do and i we see i see that we have one more person typing no uh, pressure there's a bit of a drum roll yeah. to this one now oh no it's gone exactly amazing no okay so no that's a really good picture yeah definitely maybe beside those i would ask uh talking with some officials but working to them to show that the, gen the the group we are trying to represent are uh, are existing existing to show off uh, how important it is for the groups. Uh, so you know I would maybe divide it. Correct me, Caleb, if you if you think differently on some of the parts. But I would say we can do three things. So like building awareness to sh show that this uh, idea, this area is important for us or for the community. Um, make people interested so they could actually you know make something about it uh think if they maybe need to change something in their own um close community uh or something like this then put some pressure make some action so you can either make some projects in your local communities like uh for example make a conference somewhere close make make some uh, media meeting maybe write the article as you said or maybe put some pressure by making some interviews with people you know, like politicians, like your local mayor or something like that. And then finally, you know, like evaluate uh, if the, the stuff you're doing or the people you try to uh, put the pressure on and going in the right way in really the way that is is that you and the represented groups are thinking about that they would they really need and something like that. Definitely. No, I agree. And I think one point for my side is that, I don't know, we, we as scouts are, are really lucky because we've got such a large movement. But for a lot of things that you'll push for as an advocate, maybe you'll have to build that support. So it's always really important to, to remember to, to help give other people ownership of the issue too so they can come in and support you. But no, that seems great. And thanks so much for sharing, everyone. Um, what we're going to do now is I think we're going to move to, I suppose, a bit more of a structured session where I'm going to ask you if you have a piece of paper and just a pencil. If you don't, there's no worries. So if you have a piece you can of paper, use paint or anything like, like that as well for that. Exactly. Exactly. So there's no pressure. Um, it's just if you have it, it would be nice. So Chris, I think we we did this back back in this is December, January. Um, but what yeah. it is and what it is is that I suppose for me with advocacy, it's really important to instead of rushing into, I suppose the attractive side of it, the stuff that looks cool on Instagram, that you have to take a step back and you have to realize what are the real issues that we need to work on? What are the issues I care about? What are the issues that are affecting my community? And um, what works well in my community? And you have to try and link all those things together in order to come up with, um, I suppose, an advocacy project in, in, in that sense. But that also you can look at who are the people in your community? Who are the people you want to talk to? that um that can help you influence this change or take action on the issue you want to talk about 
So this part of the session is called uh, community mapping. So what I'd be really interested to hear is, um, is about your community, about what are the issues that affect you. So this is what my page is going to look like. It's an A4 um, and half of it is, is boxed off and then the other half is split into four. So um, I'm not sure if you do have paper with you, but if you do, you can use it. And if not, there's some great uh, softwares online like Canva or as, as Chris said, Microsoft Paint that, um, that you can use. So I'll give you, I'll give you a couple of seconds to, to pull that up um, if you're going to use one of those. But what the aim of the session is to be is to visualize your community. So really take your advocacy um, from a grassroots level. So you, we're going to look at your community and hopefully we'll get to share it at the end. And um, we're going to look at what works well, what doesn't, what isn't quite working. Um, and then where's their potential? Where is the potential in your community? And we're going to link that with your interests and your passions in order to, I suppose, come up with a, a community map, an advocacy map that you can go back to your local community, you can go back to your local scout group and you go, can go say, hey, there was these two random guys from somewhere in Europe that helped us through a session. Um, and now I've got an idea of what I want to do with my advocacy. So that's what we're going to do today. So hopefully you have a piece of paper and it's lined up like this, or you have Canva or Microsoft Paint, regardless of whatever platform you want to use. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you four questions. And I'm going to give about a minute for each, if that's okay. So I'm going to have it here on my phone. I'm going to pull up my clock. I'm going to maybe give, um, yeah, we'll give a minute. I think a minute is fair. Um, and then we can go back and reflect on it. Um, and you'll have time to fill it in. There's no pressure. If you don't want to share, you don't have to share. So if we start, our first question is, or our first activity is, maybe I'll give you a couple more minutes. To, just for this part and then we move into the questions so the first part is i want you to open google maps so whether you're looking at this presentation on your computer or your phone or your desktop whatever it may be on the same screen or a different screen i want you to open up google maps or whatever other map service that you use so for me i'd look up i just go onto my um my google search engine and i go into google maps then I want you to look up um, where you're from. You can go as broad or as, um, as specific as you want. So for me, I'd put in Limerick in Ireland and it'd come up with a little, a little circle around this lovely place where I get to call home. You know, for everyone, it could be a country, uh, a city, a district of city, just as Caelan said, as broad as, or as narrow as you, as you consider your community. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So once you've uh, opened Google Maps and you've found your community, that big box that I had on the left side of my picture of my page, my A4 sheet of paper, uh, I want you to screenshot that image. Screenshot that image of um, of the um, of your community, wherever you consider it to be your community. And like Chris said, where it's a, whether it's a country, whether it's a you know a specific area in a district, whatever it might be. So I want you to screenshot that image. And what we're going to do from there is that we're going to draw the outline of your community on the large part of the A4 paper. So if we go back. So this side here, this side on the left is where we're going to draw it. Or if you're using, if you're using your, um, your, if you're using technology to do it, you can just screenshot the image and put it in. So that's what I've done. So I'll give an example at the end um, and um, you can see it, but I want you to draw it or, um, or paste it into it. Um, now, this doesn't have to be perfect. It can just be a really rough drawing. I'm, I'm not um, expecting any, um, any stuff to hand up, hang up in the, in the loop. But what it's going to do is going to help you, um, going to help you uh, visualize your community when we go into some of the questions about what are the issues that they're facing? What are the things that are good about your community? And then finding a solution to help you to push forward your advocacy. So once you have that screenshotted or drawn, you can finish it up later, don't worry. We're gonna answer some questions. So like I said, we've got four questions and I'm gonna give about maybe a minute, minute and a half for each. I might be, I might be nice and give you an extra 30 seconds just because it's important that, uh, that you get the chance to answer your question. And then at the end, we're gonna share all the answers if you feel comfortable. So I think, I think we're ready to go, Chris, are we? Ready to go with a couple of yeah, questions? I think so. 
I think, think maybe... so. I, I, I don't think we have any questions right now, but guys, if you have them, be be sure to write them down so we can straight answer them. I'm looking at the questions all the time. You're uh, you're talking, so no worries. I'm catching catching up on that. We make a good team, make a very good team. So what I think the plan is, we're going to ask four questions and we're going to give you a minute in between and then maybe Chris and I will have a chat through maybe our communities and what we see on these issues or in these questions. Okay, cool. So question number one. What works well in your community? So what works well? What are the, the things? Is it a piece of infrastructure? Is it a group? Is it um, a school? Is it um, uh, an area? Is it some biodiversity? What might it be? So Chris, for you, I don't know whether it's at home or, or over in Taiwan. For me, I would say well it would be in Warsaw, Poland, when I, where I'm from. Uh, I can say we have an amazing bike infrastructure and it's getting more and more wide. Uh, what's more, I can say we we have a really nice trash system, trash collection systems, I could say. <laughs> and a lot of those trashes all around the, the district where I live or all around, all around Warsaw. So basically all of the streets are really clean. The city looks good thanks to that. And everyone feel like really welcomed. For example, that's that work, work, what works well. What about you, Caleb? Amazing. Yeah, no, for me, it's, um, I think it's uh, how, how strong some of the youth and the civil society organizations are. So like if I look at engagement across the board from people in college, people in school, they really get young people engaged. Um, so for me, I think that that's one of the things that really works well in my community. Okay. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so that's the first question down. So I hope I hope you have had time to answer. If not, we'll. Uh, this isn't uh, like your final draft. Don't worry. This is just to help you explore some ideas. So if we move on to the second question, what issues are present in your community? So this might be some of the challenges that you're facing. It might be some of the challenges the broader community are facing. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna set the set the timer again. I mean, Chris are gonna have a chat. Sure. So what doesn't work so good in my community or what are the issues? I can say, for example, that the, the air is kind of polluted. It's not as good as it could be. Therefore, uh, having some, we are having some issues with, with our health because of that. Uh, or some of the people are not recycling or I'm not sure. No one is really sure if, if the city itself recycles uh, like the general trash that is generated around the city in the dustbins. Uh, in the in the trashes, for example, or we can say that some of the, the school students are overwhelmed with uh, how much they have to study, how much homework they have, and and stuff like that. What about you? Definitely. Yeah, I think I can relate a lot to that. But I suppose tying to my last point, although we have like these really really strong organizations, some sometimes we have like um quite little support for young people trying to influence decisions or, you know, vote in elections or run for politics. So I think that's one of the, the biggest, the biggest issues is, you know, supporting young people to, I suppose, actually make the change or be the change that they want to see. I think that's one of the biggest challenges. Yeah, I totally feel you here. <laughs> okay, part two. So I hope you had a chance to, to answer that question. Now we'll move on to the third one. So this is always my favorite one because it gets it gets me to let me have a chance to I suppose just imagine all the projects, all the policies, everything that I'd like to happen. So I'm gonna start the clock again, and I hope you're taking note of all your answers. So in a minute, and let's go. So Chris, what area does your community have? We've heard about the challenges. We've heard about what works well. How are we linking those two together? What are some of the ideas? Yeah. Uh, so I feel, for example, let's go to this, as we are collecting the trash pretty good, like all the people have access to it, the, the infrastructure for that is pretty good. And there is willing in young people and, and those schools for, for being eco-friendly for sustainable development, uh, then maybe while, I don't know, like building new biking lines or stuff like that, we can build also some new trashes because either way we need to take care, take care of some of the pedestrian walks. So maybe put new trashes instead of like general, for general waste, uh, we can put in some that has recycling bags in them or something like that. 
maybe access some people who live a little bit further from the city center so they can also like throw this trash away instead of burning it uh, and therefore creating air pollution amazing really really cool seems like you you've had a big think about this so me too i think for me it'd be um i don't know it'd be using the really cool organizations that we have to challenge the the youth voter turnout so like create better civic education so education around politics oh i have to abide by my own rules i suppose i'll talk about it later um but yes <laughs> it'd be around be around creating a more inclusive and accessible uh, education around politics and and civic rights and things like that for young people okay so now we're moving on to the final question and this is the big one who can help you achieve this so I don't only want you to think of, I suppose, the people who you want to go and talk to. So the politicians, the ministers, the um, minister or the, the Department of Education, the Ministry for Education, whatever it might be. I want to, you to also think about who's going to support you in this movement. Who are the people who are also affected or annoyed by this issue or this issue that they want to work on it? Who are the people who might have the ideas and the expertise in these specific areas that you want to work on? So I want you to think about all of this. I also want you to think of who you're going to talk to in terms of gaining that influence. But I, I want you to you know, always keep in mind you have to build your movement. Um, so I'm going to start the clock again. So yeah. one minute. So Chris, it's def who's definitely going to help easier you? To, so it's definitely easier to, to do it with a movement, not by yourself, as we already in scouting know. So uh, to get to, like, let's say, mayor of the city, because uh, he is the guy that can can you know tell all the others to how to get rid of the of the trash, where to build the can, the trash bins and everything. But by myself, it could be kind of hard to get to this man. So to build my movement, I would probably go to other young people because there's a lot of school students who take part in climate strikes and something like this. So they definitely care about the subject just as me. So maybe also their parents who want their kids to live in in an uh, unpolluted, in clean environment. Uh, maybe their families, maybe their friends. And we can go together to this mayor and talk with him. Amazing. How would you do your, your, your idea? Yeah, so I, I think I was kind of kind of like with those those two facing ideas where the people I need to influence are like the minister of education, you know, the the local politicians, but then and the schools and the teachers. But then on the other side, it's also um, it's also who's going to support me to get in, get in and actually build that movement and amplify that voice that we need to that we need to share those those thoughts and ideas that we have so to be I think if I was going to do it if I was sitting right there in my school what would I do I think I'd get a I'd get like a contact for each of the other student councils in my area so like the other schools that I that I don't go to that I'd get a a, a, a a contact for each of the student councils and I'd reach out to them and I'd talk to them about it and see if they're facing the same issue and if they are then we could work together so there we go, just out of time. So hopefully you, you got to answer those four questions. So I suppose to sum it up, this is what mine will look like. So got the, the beautiful county of Limerick in Ireland. Um, so that's my area on the left. Um, don't worry, you can't see my house. So uh, it's a bit more, it's about, that's about 120,000 people in that bubble. So um, I think it'd be difficult to find me. But if you're ever coming to Limerick, let me know. So then I've got what works well. So it was exactly what I spoke about with Chris was there's there are great youth and civil society organizations. So, you know, there's brilliant uh, NGOs so non-governmental organizations that work around um, awareness building on environmental issues and uh, on political issues. But then there's also youth organizations like we know so well. So we've got the Scouts, we've got Girl Guides, we've got YMCA, we've got sports clubs. And all these organizations help foster young people to create those values that we talk about in scouting. So then I'd look at what issues are present. So like I said, there's a low voter turnout of young people for elections. So it's very easy for anyone to, you know, point the finger at, you know, young people don't want to vote. But then you have to look at where's the potential? What's the underlying issue and how can we build on that? So it's like we can call for better civic education. So education around our civic responsibilities, our civic rights for young people. And then who can I talk to? So I use this nice diagram. It's from Plan International. They have an advocacy toolkit. Um, and we used this, Chris, over the over the week that we were in, we were in Kandersteg. And 
I suppose what it looks at is it balances who's really interested and who's really influential. And it helps you have an idea of who you need to talk to. So it goes between government to business. It goes from school teachers to the media. And it goes from communities and parents and caretakers to the actual pupils and the participants themselves. So it's all about having that wide ranging view of, um, of what, what you need to achieve, what who you need to influence and who you need supporting you. So that's a kind of an idea of what I was hoping to achieve by that. If you didn't get it exactly like this, it's okay. Or what's most important is that you're thinking about these ideas. You're thinking about the issues that are present, what's working well, where is their potential? Because I suppose why I wanted to do this as part of an advocacy um, session was because, you know, it's very easy for us to deep dive into, you know, the issues that are in the media. It's very easy for us to, you know, speak so broadly about issues. But if we don't look at our community, our specific communities, where we're from, underline the issues, outline them and define them, then it's going to be very hard for us when it gets more complicated along when we're looking at policy, when we're being, uh, when we're debating in the media, when we're co convincing other people to get involved with us. So it's really important that you're able to define that baseline for yourself. And although you might not have a specific idea now, I hope you had like an, a, a chance to, to map all the different issues that, that might be there. So moving on, I'd like to share these ideas, share these impacts. I'd want to know what, what topics came to mind for you. And now if you, if you didn't get that finished now, do not worry. What, we, what you can do is you can share a project that you've worked on before. So what it's gonna do, if you scan this link, scan this QR well, code. Put also the, the, the link in the chat, so it's easier. <laughs> Thank you very much. So what this will do is it's gonna bring you to a map going to bring you out to a map of the world and um, from there you're going to be asked to well you won't be asked you you'll press the plus button on the screen and you'll be able to put down a pin with your location so it could just be a general municipality area so I put down Limerick Ireland um, and what I did was I, I took those four questions and I put uh, I put my answers under them and I put a picture in of myself too and you can if you feel comfortable or a picture of the project that you do whatever it may be um, so you can use mine as an example, but that um, that I want to create a kind of a uh, a map of all the brilliant work that you guys are doing. Um, and, you know, afterwards, if it's something that you want to keep up and you stay want to stay working on, then uh, Chris and I are happy to be uh, happy to support you in any way, because we uh, we leave our emails at the at the end of the at the end of the workshop. Exactly. So cool. Hopefully everyone has that link now and they also have a chance to scan that. So what I'll do is I'll move to the map. So I have the map here, hoping it's working for you. And if it's not, please let me know. It should work, it, at least it works for me and I'm not the host of it, so I think it should. Amazing, cool. So I don't know, I can't, I, I don't know, can I tell if there's any participants in this, but I'm hoping there is. So, for example, like I was speaking about, this is what I did. So I put in a picture. Are you here, Chris? No, no, you must yes, be on I'm the here. others. Yes. No, I'm, no, on the I'm... on the other side of the picture in this. Oh yeah. <laughs> so what I did, I put my name and I put where I'm from, but I also said what works well in my community, what issues are present, where is there potential to act, and who can I talk to? Oh, we've got one. Oh, we got someone from Brazil, yeah. Fortaleza. Brilliant. So Maria is from Brazil and her project is about um, a campaign for change. So the campaign goal is to, to get Scouts members to join the Take Care of Our Ocean campaign by agreeing to no longer use uh, single-use plastic cups. Brilliant. Encourage all region Scout members to cut the elastic from their mask before disposing them. Really cool. Um, for Brazilian Republic Day, start a mailing campaign with postcards and letters about the dangers of plastic. Organize a cleanup for World Scouts Trash the Trash Day in May. Very good. Conduct cleanups in June and September of last year. And then present the results of our project and cleanups to Jota Jodi in October. Amazing. This is really, really cool. And well done, Maria. Um, 
Brilliant. So I think that's the perfect example of what I was hoping to see. I was hoping to see the best practice sharing from all over the world. So hopefully we have some more people sharing. Oh, we do. Yeah, we do. And it looks like oh, it's look, someone, oh, is it someone, also... someone pretty close to home. Brilliant. Yeah, maybe, you know, bring... like city next to you or something. Yeah. <laughs> In Roscommon. Brilliant. Yeah, so to bring gender neutral toilets to the NYF, which is our National Youth Forum next week. That's brilliant work. And I'll actually, I'll be at the National Youth Forum too. So I look forward to catching up there and well done on your work. Oh, we have someone from India as well. Amazing. Okay, let's zoom out. We have someone who's from oh, India wow. sharing actually the, the map that they, they I did. I love Amazing. it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Amazing. So one of the, one of the, positive points of ours. One thing that works well in their community was law and management. Some things that don't, do not work so well are, are the issues that are facing challenges is sanitation, education and infrastructure. And then some of the solutions were uh, being hygienic and saving water. Brilliant. And then who would they, um, who would they help get to support them? So family and friends. Always a good starting point. I think I, I find it a lot easier sometimes to convince politicians or convince my, my mother or my brother than convince politicians, but sometimes the opposite, it depends. So family and friends <laughs> is a very good starting point. And then cities and chairman or MLA. Brilliant. That's really, really good. Thanks so much for sharing. Oh, brilliant. We've got more coming in. Okay, cool. Let's go to South Africa. Jonathan, this name looks familiar. Um, so <laughs> Jonathan is running a national project which encourages scouts to collect bread tags and plastic bottle tops and donate them in order to exchange them for wheelchairs for those less fortunate. This is done in line with Nelson Mandela Day. Brilliant. And it's really Sounds nice amazing. to see you too, Jonathan. I look forward to catching up soon. And thanks for sharing. Cool. Let's go over to... Oh, we were in Brazil. Right, now let's go to... Well, I can. Okay, let's maybe let's check the last one and let's move on. Maybe uh, okay, yeah. but we still encourage everyone to to write down their own uh, like good practices. What what have you done or, or wrote down as, as this map that Caleb said about before, and you can save or bookmark this this padlet to look in afterwards. Definitely, definitely. So thanks so much, everyone, for sharing. Um, I hope you can kind of use this as a tool to see that you're you're a part of a big movement. You're not on your own with these issues, and sometimes you might see connections between the two. But um, now, Chris, maybe we'll move on to what advocacy is for us. So we've talked a lot about um, talked a lot about, I suppose, the nice points in terms of mapping mapping your community. But um, there's also a very practical side to to advocacy, and sometimes it's a it's a it's a weird and wonderful world. Um, where you face a lot of different challenges. So I know, Chris, you wanted to talk a bit about some best practices and tips you had. Yeah, uh, I'm actually going to summarize it at the end, so if you could move. Yeah, so uh, for sure, as I'm, as I said, I'm in close relationship to business. So I kind of and take part in conferences. I try, you know, to push forward in those conferences, take part uh, as a speaker or a part of the like discussion panel, and every time just try to push my uh, my agenda to show that young people can also do that. A lot of time when I participate in those, I'm the youngest one. And sometimes I'm like, my age is uh, half the age of the next youngest person there. And definitely that's nothing that stops me from, from that. And actually after that, uh, I get to know a lot of people uh, from, from the meetings. Uh, let's say on the picture on the bottom, for example, it's a discussion panel in Dubai, actually, from the war, last World Expo, where I spoke with an amazing professor from uh, Middlesex University of Dubai. Uh, we still keep in, in touch with each other. We talk a little bit about youth engagement in, in business, about the fresh uh, look of the young people in innovation and, and more. Uh, if you could go further. Uh, here, another topic, another time talking about innovation and if young people should start up their own businesses or maybe it's only for older people. Yeah, next one, please. Uh, yeah, in my work, actually, in advocacy, I use a lot of video and social media, especially LinkedIn. 
I really encourage you to set up your own link LinkedIn. Actually, both me and Caleb are heavy users of this platform. So we try to do our best with uh, with using so. With even like, you know, every now and then short videos trying to share an idea, maybe build it awareness or interest I talked about before. Uh, trying to, to do something like this, you can reach really tons of people who could be interested. Like you see for my post on LinkedIn, that was for Words Thinking Day. Got 7,000 views, uh, probably of most people who I don't even know. On the left, you can see it was a picnic in city of Gdansk, uh, Jamboree site for 2027 in Poland, where half of the city, uh, half of the district came to, to see if we're gonna get the Jamboree and they could learn about scouting and our agenda, uh, if you could go further. So that's uh, more local for us because it's a scout event. It's the last European conference where we, together with other countries like uh, scouts from Czech, Czech, from Slovakia, from uh, from Belgium and others, work together on, on our common agenda to, to push through for during the conference. That's a good place to start. Can you go further? And if you go pretty nicely with that, you can either get a huge flag, huge decorative on one of the statues in the city or you can get a mention in uh one of the biggest uh job job offer places in internet in poland or something like this only because you cared and because you posted could you go further and yeah and going further on more or less as you can see if you do that properly you're gonna get seen on the left you can see i was real loud really trying to, to ask the questions sometimes not so comfortable for people and I got, thanks to that, um, men got mentioned at the World Cup conference as the question speaking, asking guy. On the right hand side, you can see uh, a recent uh, Instagram story actually from the president of the city of Dansk, uh, just wishing the best memories, the best, uh, wishing the best wishes to all of the scouts around Poland and kind of just looking forward for the Polish Jamboree as well. So you see, if you do it properly, it's kind of easy to, to get there and to, you know, get the mentions. And to sum it all up, uh, yeah. for me, uh, use LinkedIn. It's a useful tool. Uh, start locally so you can start it in this European conference, something like this, or your local community. Be direct because it's super easy, much easier than you think to get to your local politicians or not even local, but national politicians and be persistent when you do that because uh, that's probably the most important thing here. You can uh, call them, email them, try to invite them for interview. There's plenty of ways you can do that. And moving it to you, Caleb. That was amazing, Chris. And I, I, I don't know what I liked more. Was it the focus on intergener intergenerational learning? Was it all about just like staying going? Or was it those really cool socks you had? I saw like you had like cool socks in like two of the pictures. Um, so no, thank you very much for sharing that. And some really important messages. And as well, LinkedIn, yes. We're, we're both definitely avid users. Um, I'm surprised we're not like... Um, PR managers for them yet because we seem to be saying it a lot but no definitely thanks very much I suppose on my side um, I just want to quickly run through um, what advocacy actually looks like what is on the I suppose it's it's a broad term and we try to define it at the start but that is not a one-size-fits-all so I know when I first started and I heard what the, the I, when I heard the word advocacy this is what I thought I thought it was, you know, standing up and talking at big conferences in front of people. I thought it was holding the microphone in my hand and making the calls to action that I wanted to make. But in reality, it's a lot different. It involves talking to the media. So whether it's going on TV, going on radio, looking at articles you can write in your local newspapers, it's about protesting, it's about demonstrations. Um, here you can see me um, on the streets because of the cost of living crisis in Ireland. You can, on the right, it's also at the World Scout Jamboree, where we have the Irish flag and the pride flag. It's talking to politicians and, like Chris said, building those relationships with the people around you so that it's a long term change. You know, with the, the beauty and also the challenge with advocacy is that it's a long term process. You want to try and create those changes so quickly that it's so important that you need to hold on to those relationships. So from here, there's a mixture of politicians from Ireland, the US ambassador, the Ukrainian minister for the environment. And I can still stay in contact with those people because instead of, you know, 
I balanced the way I engage with them in terms of this is what I want to achieve, but this is how I plan to do it in the long term. Who do I need to talk to? And these are all different stakeholders that engage on different issues. Then you can also, uh, I suppose, you like Chris said, use social media or you know create those uh, flashy things. So here on the left is at the Parliament with a with a saw a sign calling out their climate action. But then also, it's really important to have fun. So here I am with some of my friends and some uh, pretty funny faces um, that it's really important that you can balance it, that although you can push for change, that the anxiety and the stress that comes with advocacy is very real. And it's really important that you have those people around to support you, but as well, the people that will support you in the work that you do and you can support them. So it's all about building your movement, building your movement of both friends and people that will uh, support, um, support your campaigns. And then finally, it's okay to be tired. It's very okay to be tired in the advocacy world. It's pretty normal. Here I am after a, a conference where I involved parts of everything that I spoke of there, public speaking, negotiations, building relationships, talking to the media, and I was so tired. I don't know how many cups of coffee I had that day, but it's really important that you know that you can take a step back and that you, know, you understand what you can achieve and you have the people around you to support you. So I think that's that's all from our side. Um, I hope you enjoyed that kind of crash course of, of advocacy with some, some tips and tricks along the way. Um, I suppose from my side, I just want you to remember that you can you can do advocacy in any, any way. You can do it through many different organizations. Um, you might be a good public speaker and that might be your skill. You might be really good at graphic design and that's your advocacy skill. It doesn't matter what your skill is, as long as you can find the right people to bring across that message so from my side my email and my instagram are there and i know it's the same with chris so if you ever need to reach out if you ever want to work on a project feel free to to reach out to us um but in the meantime hope you enjoyed this uh i suppose quick quick uh quick session and i'll pass it over to chris in case you want to say anything yeah basically basically you said all of the most important stuff i'm just gonna add that i remember that the uh, the change starts with you guys, with your little spark in your local community and by small changes that you make around yourself and uh, you don't always have to go big. You can start from there and then start going bigger. Maybe when you start, it's going to go bigger by itself because the media is going to hear like Caleb going around with a bike uh, <laughs> and, and uh, getting the groceries to people in need or something like this. Thank you very much for attending. If you need anything, uh, yeah, you can simply also write to me. Uh, to both of us, if you have any questions, looking for maybe someone to support you in a project or maybe looking where to get the shout out for the project, because it's also important. Uh, we're more too glad to help. Definitely. And I think what we can do is we can link you in with the different people in, in WISM, but as well um, externally. So like with, uh, like with us on a European level, obviously we're, we're in the external relations team in Europe, but we also have a brilliant team of uh, youth reps on a world level. Um, and they work on a range of different issues too. So we can help uh, link into the different people that might be relevant to your project. So I think exactly. that's all from our side. Thanks so much. And um, just remember for... to grab your badge from the link in the chat yes. to collect all the badges. Get your badge, get your badge. And the change starts with you, like Chris said. So yeah, no, it was really nice meeting you all. Thanks for engaging. And I hope you have a lovely Saturday and a lovely kiss, Jody. See you. Have a good day.